Okay, so the stream should be working now. Um, yeah, there I am. Yeah, so the stream is working now. Not sure if anyone is here yet, uh, but we're just gonna get cracking. Um, currently, is only streaming on Twitch, the YouTube. Uh, the YouTube um, streaming didn't work. Ah, people are here apparently. Um, all right, now I can see. Now I can see people showing up. Um, so yeah, uh, YouTube isn't streaming at the moment for some reason. Uh, it says I need to reconnect. Tried that like ten different times, didn't work. Uh, so. I'm just gonna leave that be, and I have uh, I have um, um, I have this on recording, so I'm gonna upload it to YouTube anyways afterwards. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, just the the first stream of the year, so this this is probably gonna be a bit a uh, bit back and forth, oh, a bit bright, I think. Uh, well, I'm not gonna fiddle around with the with the settings there now. Uh, so yeah, uh, Advent of Code 2022. Uh, I created my uh, my repository. The uh, oops, that was the wrong button. Uh, my microphone is kind of in the in the way. So I created my repository for this year. Um, of course, there's nothing in here yet because I haven't started looking at it. Uh, I've also created my uh, my little repository here, but it's it's empty at the moment. So let's head over to to Advent of Code, the website, of course. Uh, day one is unlocked. Uh, seems to be a some sort of pattern here this year. Last year, all this was just empty. So let's get into it. Uh, day one, calorie counting. Santa's reindeer typically eat regular reindeer food, which reindeer do, um, but they need a lot of magical energy to deliver presents. Oh, and that is a link to, to an older advent of code puzzle. Uh, to deliver presents on Christmas. For that, their favorite snack is a special type of star fruit. Ah, cheeky. Uh, that only grows deep in the jungle. The elves have brought you on their annual expedition to the grove where the fruit grows. Uh, to supply enough magical energy, the expedition needs to retrieve a minimum of 50 stars by December 25th. So we need to feed our reindeer with the stars. We get stars for solving puzzles. Um, so you can get two stars a day all the way from today until December 25th. Although the elves assure you that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way, just in case. Uh, collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available to you each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first. Each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. So for those of you who haven't seen or haven't haven't heard of Advent of Code before, the way this works is that um, we get these puzzles, uh, we get an explanation of the puzzle, then we uh, have to submit our solution to the puzzle. You can code your your solution in any language. The only thing that matters is the output. So theoretically, you could even do it by hand. Um, of course, the complexity makes it really hard to do by hand. Um, so yeah, so we get one star for each one. Um, and, uh, it goes all the way from today until the 25th. The jungle must be too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or access from the air. The elves expedition traditionally goes on foot. As your boats approach land, the elves begin taking inventory of their supplies. One important consideration is food. In particular, the number of calories 
uh, calories each elf is carrying, which is my puzzle input. Uh, the elf takes turn uh, takes take turns writing down the number of calories contained by the various meals, snacks, rations, etc. that they brought with them. Seems like an odd way to plan an expedition, but okay. Uh, one item per line. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory, if any, by a blank line. For example, suppose the elves finish writing their items uh, calories and end up with the following list. So here we have five elves, one with three different things, one with a single thing, one with two, one, another one with three, and one with one big calorie dense meal, like a pound of lard or something. Uh, this list represents the calories of the food carried by five elves. The first elf is carrying food with 1,000, uh, 2,000, and 3,000 calories, a total of 6,000 calories. The second elf is carrying one food item with 4,000 cal calories. The third elf is carrying food with 5,000 and 6,000 calories, a total of 11,000 calories, so on and so forth. Um, in case the elves get hungry and need extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They'd like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, this is two th uh, 24,000 carried by this guy, I assume. Yeah. Uh, yeah, carried by the fourth elf. Find the elf carrying the most calories. How many total calories is that elf carrying? To play... Oh, crap. I forgot to identify myself before I did this. Um, oh, well, that was easy. I was already logged in. Uh, so my puzzle input. So of course, the, the real puzzle input is way bigger uh, than the than the test input. Um, hence why I was saying it. It was hard to do this. Uh, by hand. Uh, let's just call this input.text. Um, so we need to basically end up with which elf has the most calories. Now, for task number two, we will probably need to do something more complicated. Um, so sometimes it's, it's often easier to sort of model uh, task number one in a, in a decent way so that we get um, that we get um, sort of better a, a better chance of easily being able to implement number one or number two um, but for this we're just going to do a very simple uh, incremental thing so uh, the output we want is how many total calories is that elf carrying? So we create two, two variables here. Um, we have the highest, which we just set to zero, and the current, which we also set to zero. Then we go line by line in our input. Um, and that was input.txt. So take all the lines in that file. If we just echo this out and now run and run this, we will see that it just runs through the files and echoes out every single line, which is what we expected. Um, of course, this is text. We want numbers. So we're going to need uh, string utils. Uh, I think that that's in string utils. Um, just to figure out. Yep. So now we can run this, but now you can see we have it spitting out lines, and then it crashes because it's unable to uh, to read another another number. So uh, what we can do is do current 
plus equals percent, that will tally up uh, the calories for the current elf. If we put this in a try accept clause, then it will go through and take this, add that to zero, add this to zero, add that to zero, add this, or not to zero, but to the current sum, add this to the current sum. Then it gets to the blank line. It throws in a value error because it's unable to parse the integer uh, because we're now faced with, a, with an empty line. Then we can say if current is greater than highest, um, or actually you can say highest is equal to the maximum value of highest and current. And we can let current be zero. Uh, and then at the end of this loop, we can print out the highest number. So this basically takes, um, sets this highest variable just to the, the maximum of the highest and the current, reset current, so we go, then we go to the next line. This except, of course, swallows the error, error, so that doesn't propagate up anymore. And now we should have a number. Now, of course, uh, we have, that is probably the correct number, uh, but this will probably not grab this last one because we're iterating over each line, so we'll get to this line throw a value error, this, and then it will start adding these up, and then it will just get to the end of the loop. Uh, so at the end of the loop, we also want to add in one of these highest uh, highest checks uh, to update it with, a, with the last value. But that is probably the same number. Yeah. The only, only way this would have mattered uh, would have been if, if this one was the biggest one. Um, now you can see it's like, now it updates without this line. Um, it would still be the old, the old value. But for our case, that is just to make this technically correct so that you can take it and apply it to your own input and it will still work. So we put our answer in here, submit. And that's the right answer. You are one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. So, uh, carry on with part two. Um, part two. By the time you calculate the answer to the elf's question, they've already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food uh, might eventually run out of snacks. To avoid, uh, to avoid this unacceptable situation, the elves would instead like to know the total calories uh, carried by the top three elves, carrying the most calories. That way, even if one of these el one of those elves runs out of snacks, they still have two backups. In the example above, the top three elves are the fourth elf with uh, 24,000, the third elf with 1,100, and the fifth elf with uh, 10,000 calories, and the sum of the calories car uh, carried by these three elves is 45,000. So our task for the, the second gold star is to find the top three elves carrying the most calories and then figure out how many calories are those elves carrying in total. Uh, so I like to split mine up into uh, two parts, mostly because I like, I like being able to go back and uh, and sort of see my original solution before I had a look at the second part. Um, I know some people just have them both in one file, maybe two blocks, and then they can share functions and stuff like that. But I like to do it this way. Uh, so, of course, our highest isn't going to be able to properly track everything anymore. Um, what we could do probably the easiest way around this uh, is to just store the three highest. Um, they don't actually need to be the three. Yeah, they, 
this this should be fine. So our highest check is now, of course, a bit more complicated. So instead of writing it once here, and so once in the try accept, and once after, we're going to split that out into a function. Uh, of course, these are global variables, so we don't actually need to take them in as parameters or anything. Um, so we can just do this. Uh, and then we say, so for age and highest dot mitems. Uh, so highest dot mitems is um, basically in, in a normal loop like this, uh, we're now looping over all the highest value values and we can get the value of age out but we can't set age to anything. By looping over mutable items, so by default, it goes to the items iterator. If you go to the mutable items iterator, we can now update the age within our, uh, within our loop. Uh, so essentially making this a var instead of a let. Um, so what do we do now? We have um so we could we could do this and say max of age and current um but that would of course set all of these to the highest value so we need to know if we replace something then we shouldn't go further and replace anything else um so I'm going to replace this with an if check. So if current is larger larger than age, then age is equal to current and break out of this loop. Uh, that means that we loop through this. If we find one, we replace it, break out of the loop. If not, we go to the next one and the next one. And if it's not bigger than any of them, we just exit the loop and nothing has happened. Uh, What's up? We are doing, um, what? Uh, we are doing advent of code coding puzzles or more specifically today's coding puzzle. Um, of course, if you're not, um, used to this in other programming languages, NIM has, um, when, when NIM, so echo is, is NIM's way of saying print or uh, console.write or whatever you used to. Um, this is now, so highest is now not a string anymore. It is a, uh, it is a, um, an array of integers. Uh, but for this one, we are, we want a string, but NIM has two string, um, so two, two string automatically built in for a lot of types. And you can define your own by writing a process like this, which takes in, uh, your type and returns a string, but we don't have to do that here because arrays of, uh, numbers already have that implemented in them. So here we can see we have the highest, the second highest, and the third highest, hopefully. Uh, but we, of course, need to add all those together. So we could, of course, do zero plus highest one plus highest two, and so on. Or we could implement secutils. Uh, and we have spammers in our channel. Um, how do I deal with these again? Let me see. Well, skip there. For something that is designed for streamers, Surprisingly hard to do this live 
like all I want to do is just remove the last message in the channel. I can pen it easily. That's not what I want to do. Block, yes. And delete message. Yes, full screen. That's what I wanted. Sorry, I'm I'm off on another on another screen trying to remove this spam. Um, hmm. Um. And uh, to uh, to uh, head game fire. Um, I live in northern Norway, so getting getting naked at the moment is not really an option uh, because it's cold. I can time people out, but I can't remove messages. That's annoying. Oh, well. Um, so yeah, where were we? Yeah, so I imported SecUtils, which is another package in the standard library. And now we can do this. Uh, and just do a plus B. Ooh. Why did it suddenly complain about that? Just nim lsp uh, being on the fritz for some reason. Hmm. I haven't updated uh, nim lsp for the latest latest version of nim. So, essentially, what this does. Uh, stream manager. Um, there are apparently a hundred new, uh, a hundred new things on Twitch since last I was here. Uh, nope, still no simple way to remove things here. Hmm, it's not that I can see. Yeah, apparently everything is new on Twitch since I was. Yeah, I already banned them, but I don't seem to have a button to delete stuff for some reason. Uh, maybe I can do it through the Yeah. Anyways. So yeah, what this fold L does, uh, it, it folds the sequence, um, or in this case, array, uh, leftwards. So if we look at the output we had, um, here. So if we look at this, uh, it takes this, then it takes the two the two rightmost entries and it sort of folds them over and applies the function or applies the statement that we give gave where a and b are uh, two of the values so in this case it would be it would be a and b so we take those add those together and gets uh, whatever that is. I can do this in in this window. Uh, uh, uh. Right. So then that would become this value. 
and now this is A, and this is B, and it adds those two together, and now the sequence is only, or in this case again, the array only contains one term, and it is this number, uh, and that is the result. So it's kind of like a, a sum, um, because we're using plus here, but it's, it's sort of a general sum kind of thing. Reduce reduce the, the list to one element uh, by applying that function over and over. There's also a fold right, which just folds it the other way, which uh, is important if you have non-communicative properties. Now my Right. So Firefox just completely froze on me, which is fun. Not quite sure why. Just give me a sec while I get Firefox back up and running. There we go. I didn't remember where I was though, which is nice. So copy our number into here, submit. Oh, that is not the right answer. My answer is too low. Uh, okay. Oh, you know what? I goofed up. So this thing, we're, we're always replacing if it is higher than the current value. What we should do, uh, or what we have to do, is to check if we are higher than the lowest value in the list. Uh, because if we replace the second highest, then we won't yeah. So this won't work. Uh, we have to replace the smallest number in the list. Uh, all right. Um, I mean, the easy way to do this, there are two easy ways to do this. One, we could just store, we could just store uh, the sequence of all the elves and then sort that, pick the top three, and add them together. Uh, that would require a bit more memory. Uh, of course, in this small example, that doesn't really matter. But uh, the better way would be to find the smallest value, check if it's bigger, then an X point, then an X point. Um, I wonder if you could sort them. I mean, we definitely could, but um, right. So there's really yeah. We should always replace the smallest number, so we only ever have to check the smallest of our numbers. Um, and the smallest, so when we update a number, we can't make, we can't be sure that our number is the smallest because we can end up in a scenario where we, where we replace the smallest number with a bigger number, but now that number is bigger than one of our other numbers. Uh, so we can't just do that in place replace and keep the the thing the the list um ordered so let us just let let us do this still in a quite straightforward way so create a variable called smallest uh, which we counterintuitively set to the highest integer 
Uh, now we loop through all the numbers in our list of highest and we set smallest to the smallest of um, of smallest and edge. Uh, so now smallest will keep the smallest number in our sequence. Of course, we're not really interested in the smallest number. We're interested in the index of that number. Um, so let's just keep that as well. And to do that, we should probably turn this into this. Uh, yeah, the comments are something else. Um, these streams used to be so wholesome and nice. Um, and set the smallest index equals to i, but we don't have an i. We can get an i by doing this. So by in them by default, if you supply two arguments, uh, you get a the iterator called pairs. And for a sequence, the pairs iterator uh, will return the index and the value. Uh, if you do it for a table, for example, you get the key and the value. Um, but there's nothing special about these iterators. You can, you can uh, implement them for whatever you want. Uh, but yeah, now we have the smallest index, which is really what we we were after. Uh, and then we can say um, highest at the smallest index is equal to highest uh, to the maximum value of highest at the smallest index and our uh, uh, current value. There we go. Um, run this again. Oop. So index minus one, not in zero to two. So what happened here is I set smallest to the highest integer. Oh. I did this one the wrong way around. So if h is smaller than the smallest number, not if it's larger than the larger than the largest, or not if the largest, not if the smallest number is larger than or smaller than h. There we go. So this should now be slightly larger than our previous value, and it is. Uh, you don't have to enumerate it. Enumerate what? Uh, return. Submit. That's the right answer. Run gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. You have completed day one. Oh, you can share apparently on Twitter or Mastodon or return to the advent calendar. So what did we get? Aha, uh -huh. we have what appears to be a wavy ocean. Uh, you're new to NIM and you thought when you do a four, you have to enumerate it like Python. Uh, still not entirely sure what you mean. Oh, you mean like, you mean like doing, uh, for for i in uh, zero dot dot highest dot high and then do that is that what you mean in that case that is that is not necessary in them Basically, what 
Uh, oh, ah, no. Um, you don't need to explicitly call the iterator. There are there are two default iterators. You have the items and the pairs iterator. Uh, so for fun, so this is what we had. If we now create a type, um, let's call it our array, which is a distinct array. And we cast this to our array. Now things will stop working. Uh, oh, not the way I expected it to stop working. Wait, which version of him am I on? Oh, I'm on a devil version. Let's try this again with stable. Ooh, and I have an old stable. Huh. Okay. Well, apparently I found a compiler bug. Um, Maybe this works. Oh. Okay, you know what? Let's just create a good old fashioned object. Like so. So if we now run this, we will get an error because uh, Nim got our array, which is the type we just made, but expected. And here you see it's trying to call an iterator called pairs, uh, and it has the different different ones it knows about. So this one would be the one it would normally try to try to run. Pairs i x and t for a array i x t. And then the tuple has a key and a value, ix and t. Uh, so ix is, is just the, the type of the number. Uh, so if we grab this, oh, actually don't I need to grab that. So if we now implement um, an iterator pairs, so it has to have the name pairs, that takes in, uh, an R array type and returns a tuple of uh, key and value, which both are integers. We can now do for i in 0 dot dot 2, for example, and do x dot inner i um, can yield a tuple with i and this value. So now we have basically implemented, you saw the, the error from this line disappear. So now we have basically implemented the pairs iterator for our number or for our custom type. Of course, that wasn't the only thing. Uh, our array also has um, this access procedure. So to get an ax to get, ac be able to access an index, which is what we do down here. Uh, so for that, we can implement this, which takes our array uh, and a index and returns an integer because that's what our, our array type contains. Uh, so that would just be x.inner.index. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, NIM, so NIM will automatically return the last statement in a procedure. So this gets automatically returned. Uh, and now we still have an error. If you look at this, it says it got our array and an integer and another integer, but expected one of index equals 
um, of course, R1 is this one. Index equals var array and backwards index and a T. Um, so we can implement that as well. So our array index, we'll just do it by int because that's all we do in this case. Value is also an int. Uh, this actually needs to be variable because we want to change the contents of our array. So our array.inner, the index that we got is equal to value. And now the all the errors disappeared uh, apart from the fold the fold thing uh, oh and right so fold fold apparently just uses these uh, so it throws an error that we don't have a length function so we can actually implement that. Proc length, which takes our array, returns an integer. Our array is always three long, so we just return the number three. And if we now run this, it works. Uh, so basically, in in Nim, a lot of these like looping with different keys. Uh, array access or array access, uh, array assignment, uh, just calls various procedures uh, and iterators and stuff like that, which you can implement yourself. Uh, of course, these don't even need to be procedures, I believe, as long as they're callable. Uh, so yeah, that's a template. Um, so this could be function, which might seem a bit counterintuitive because we're modifying state. But the way functions work in Nim is that you can only change you can only change parameters passed in by var or by reference. Um, so in this, for example, we couldn't do uh, we couldn't do this uh, because now. Now we are using, so if you look down here, accesses global state current. And that is not allowed in a func, but it is allowed in a proc. But of course, that's not what we want. That would just create horrible issues for us. And uh, stuff like fold L, um, if we go to the definition of fold L, fold L is just a template in the secutils package. And all that fold L does, uh, it just does this. So it uses type of, uh, accesses an element, checks the length of an element, uh, loops over all the stuff, uh, thus and or assigns A and B and, uh, Chris an operation or runs the the operation that we uh, passed passed in up here uh, so it, it really just expands just code expansion and these uh, these things you can you can implement yourself uh, but of course, I'm going to up, upload this to GitHub afterwards. So we're just going to clean this up uh, so that it looks. It would be really confusing uh, if I had implemented all that in, in uh, the uploaded version. But yeah, that is. Uh, uh, so part one. That is more or less. Uh, everything from me today. Um, hopefully, I'll be back again tomorrow uh, to solve another 
solve another day of advent of code. Um, you can check out the GitHub repository. I'm also going to be uploading this recording to YouTube uh, and put it in a uh, in a playlist, which is available through this link uh, in the uh, in the repository. And uh, oh yeah, I should also join the uh, should join the NIM leaderboard. So for those of you who don't know, uh, you have a leaderboard function in NIM. Um, and the leaderboard, uh, no one has posted the leaderboard link in the advent of code uh, channel. Let me have a look here. Uh, advent of NIM. Why isn't this pinned? Um, NIM leaderboards. Uh, all right. Right. Am I in this one? I was in it before. Oh yeah. So I'm already in the, the NIM leaderboard. Um, of course, the leaderboards are based on time. So they're based on how fast you're able to solve these. Um, since I do these after work live on stream, I'm never the fastest one, uh, far from it. But uh, I'll try to get as many as possible done uh, with you guys. So yeah, um, that was it for today. Um, with an extra little uh, bit there at the end about how to implement, as you say, some interfaces. They're not, we don't really have interfaces in them, but these are kind of, or this kind of stuff is, is similar. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys for um, I'll see you guys for some later shenanigans. Uh, and there we go. That was everything for uh, the first day of um, I forgot what it's called. Advent of Advent of Code. Advent of Nim is the Nim specific one. Um, so yeah, that was it. We have a little bit of ocean, apparently because we just arrived on a beach, I think. So we're going to fight our way through the jungle, probably. Um, and, uh, get all the way to the 25th at some point. So yeah, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you will join me for the later ones as well. Bye-bye.